Hey there folks, welcome to the channel and welcome to Celebrate Sausage, a series sponsored by The Sausage Maker. If you're into making sausages, The Sausage Maker is a one-stop shop for all your sausage making supplies. Check them out in the description box below. In today's episode, we are going to be making the Texas Bowl of Chili Sausage. This was a recipe that was submitted by one of our longtime patrons, and after I got to reading the ingredients and the process, I was completely blown away and knew we had to feature it on this year's show, and I'm glad I did. Now, with that being said, I just want you to know that we now have a place where you could submit recipes, where you could submit your photographs of your failures, of your successes, and be a larger part of the Two Guys in a Cooler community. We started a subreddit page. I'll put a link for it in the description box below. Head over there, be a part of the community, ask your questions, give advice, and hopefully next year for Celebrate Sausage Season 4, we'll have a special contest for those of you who belong to the subreddit, Two Guys in a Cooler, where we pick out several recipes and give out prizes to the absolute best one. So be sure to check that out if you want to join that community. Let's make the Texas Bowl of Chili Sausage, shall we? Texas Bowl of Chili Sausage coming right up. We're going to start off with some 2932 millimeter hog casings. If you have bigger casings, you want to use those. That's totally fine. I like these. And if you want a good sausage, you got to use good ingredients. And that's why we use natural casings from the sausage maker. This can make or break your sausage right here. Just telling you right now. So you just want to make sure you get double A grade casings. And all the natural casings that the sausage maker sells are double A grade. So let's open this pack together. And right there at the top, you can see that there's a simple knot. We're going to remove that simple knot. And that just keeps everything from getting all, you know, tangled up. And very gently, I'm just going to grab one casing and pull it away from the rest of the bunch. And if you're careful, you won't have a whole lot of problems with it. So just very carefully, as you can see here, we're pulling it through the bag. And there it goes. And we'll do four or five more. And now we're just going to tie that knot back up and reseal the bag, if you have that option. And then just place it back in the fridge. When natural casings are salt packed or stored in a brine solution, they will basically last indefinitely in your refrigerator. So we're going to seal this up, pop it into the fridge, and let's go ahead and get our water ready. Because the first thing we want to do is rinse off the casing both on the inside and the out. Now, this is actually very easy to do in your kitchen sink, but my kitchen sink is occupied, so I'm going to show you in a bowl of water. We're rinsing the outside of the casing, and now we're just going to fill the inside of the casing up with some water. Now, if you're using a kitchen sink, run your faucet water into your casing, let it fill up a little bit, and then run that water through, and your casing is now properly rinsed. Once you finish this, you can now take your casing and put it into some cool water. This is the stage that's going to actually tenderize your casing and help you get that nice snappy bite. I am going to add a half a teaspoon of baking soda to every two cups of water, and that's going to help lubricate the casing. This will make your casing super slippery, which will reduce casing blowouts and will also reduce any knots. So I'm going to pop that into the fridge. That's going to hang out in there overnight, and it's now time to make our bone broth. This is such an important part of this recipe. I like to make my own because we can pull a lot of flavor, a lot of collagen from these bones, which is going to greatly benefit your sausage. We've got onion, garlic, bay leaf, peppercorn, a lot of beef bones. We're going to add enough water to cover by an inch and let it simmer for four to six hours. I am going to skim it halfway through this cooking process. We'll give it a cover. Let's make our roasted garlic. I've just got a head of garlic. I'm going to cover it with some extra virgin olive oil, pop it into the oven at 400 Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius for 20 to 30 minutes until it's nice and roasted. For the sake of brevity, I've already processed our meat and cheese, and this is what we're looking at. We've got our extra sharp cheddar cheese. This is not high temp cheese. For the meat, we've got beef, pork shoulder, and pork back fat. You could go all beef, you could go all pork. I like a combination of the two. And notice my pieces are cut small enough to fit into my grinder head. We do want this cold, so that's gonna go back into the freezer, and this cheese is gonna go into the refrigerator until we need it. And it's time for our chili sauce. Okay, woo, are you still with me? This is an intense recipe. I've got three types of pepper here. This is chile ancho, this is New Mexico chili, and right here, we have guajillo chili, and you can get these chilies at your local Mexican market, or you can get them off of Amazon. They're pretty easy to get, and all we're going to do here is we're going to remove the stem and remove the seeds. Once the stem and seeds have been removed, we can go ahead and weigh each pepper, and in the description box below, I'm going to have a recipe link, and it's going to have everything you need in the exact measurements that you're going to need it. So I've tried to make this recipe as easy as possible. And trust me when I tell you, it's absolutely worth the trouble. So now that our peppers 
have been weighed. We're going to add the rest of our ingredients, starting with cumin. Just a touch of cumin goes into this mix. We've got a little MSG, some Mexican oregano, and some salt. And that's it as far as the spices go. Let's go ahead and now add our roasted garlic. I'm going to add this entire head, but for the sake of, you know, continuity in the recipe, I am going to weigh it so that you can at least know how much is going into that. So we're going to weigh our roasted garlic and add that. And at this point, what we want to do is add our freshly prepared bone broth. It's still on the stove. It's piping hot. And that bone broth is basically going to rehydrate those peppers. And so I'm just going to go ahead and strain out the solid from the liquid and this smells incredible. And I'm going to be weighing the bone broth that's added. So my peppers are on a scale right now, and we're adding just the right amount of bone broth that the recipe calls for. If you have extra bone broth, just freeze it or refrigerate it, add it to your next dish because it'll be amazing. Okay, bone broth added. Let's cover that with some cling film. That hot bone broth is going to rehydrate those peppers. That's going to hang out there for 30, 45 minutes. Our meat should be chilled. Let's go ahead and take the temperature because remember, we want it under 32 degrees at all times. So let's see what it's at. 30 Fahrenheit, absolutely perfect. Let's go ahead and grind this on a number six plate. Quick temperature check before we mix it. Remember, under 32, and it looks like we are... Just there, a little too close for comfort. I'm going to pop that back in the freezer while we finish up the rest of our ingredients. Our chilies have been rehydrated, and this smells incredible. We're going to add that to our blender and blend it on high until we form a nice, smooth chili paste. chili paste is done, but we're going to add a little baking soda to help alkalinize it. Right now it's a little acidic, and if you add that to your meat, it's going to make your meat crumbly and it's not going to have a very good bind. But at this point, it's going to be absolutely perfect. Okay, so let's talk about the spices for the meat. We're going to be adding cure number one, salt, pepper, chili powder. Of course, we're going to add some cumin. We need some Mexican oregano, and we're going to add some red pepper flakes. We're going to come back with a little onion powder and some potato starch to help with the bind. And that is our spice profile. We've got our chili paste. We've got our cheddar cheese and our meat has been rechilled. And this journey is almost complete. Look at that meat. Absolutely beautiful. The fat particles are prevalent and solid throughout. And that's what you get when you grind under 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's really the magic number when it comes to making sausages. Just keep everything below that temperature and you're good to go. Speaking of which, let's take a quick temperature check. If you don't have an instant read thermometer by Thermoworks, I'm gonna put a link in the description box below. Look at that, 30.9, perfect. Let's add our spices, let's add our chili paste, and we're gonna give this a mix until we get that nice sticky tacky consistency. So I'm gonna add a portion of my chili paste now, give it a mix, and then I'm going to add the rest of it. But the recipe in the description box below will have the total quantity of chili paste that you need to add. And you can either add it all at once or you can do it in portions like I'm doing here. At this point, we're just going to mix this until we reach that sticky, tacky consistency. You know, the one where you grab a handful and you turn your hand upside down and it sticks to the underside of your hand. And once that happens, you can stop mixing it and add your cheese. So let's see how we did. There we go, sticks to the underside of my hand, no problem. Let's go ahead and add our cheese and we're just gonna mix this to incorporate it. If you find that your meat at this stage is still a little dense and you'd like to loosen it up a little more, you can always add a little more chili paste or you can add a little beer. That would be kind of a nice uh, flavor addition to the sausage. So there we go, our meat mixture is complete. I mean, this actually smells like the chili that we typically make while it's cooking. So I cannot wait to see what that's gonna taste like. We're pulling our casings out that we prepared yesterday. They've been soaking overnight. I mean, you could just look and see how tender these casings are. We're gonna fill them up with a little bit of that water and this should help them slide on and off of your stuffing horn with no problem. So just put my fingers in it, fill them with water, put a little bit of water on that horn. And if you've done this step right, you should be able to move your casing back and forth with no problem. And we're now ready to stuff this casing full of meat. So I'm just gonna apply very gentle pressure 
with my finger and my thumb. And as that meat is coming out, I'm just going to let it naturally pull that casing off of the horn. This is why having it so well lubricated is important. I don't want it too tight and I don't want it to loose. And this is a step that does take a little bit of practice, but after a couple times, I bet you'll have it down like a boss. No problem. All right. All our meat has been pushed into a casing and I'm just going to use a sausage stuffing horn cleaner to empty out that stuffing horn. This is a really handy tool to have. Check the description box if you want info on that. And now we're going to link. And right here, you can kind of do whatever you want. If you just want to coil your sausage, you can do that. If you want to make long links, short links, it's whatever you fancy. I'm going to grab the end of that sausage, find a notch on my pan, and make roughly eight, nine inch links. So we're going to twist that three times forward. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three. There we go. The next link gets twisted three times toward us. So here we go. Ready? One, two, three. And let me show you a little trick just to make sure that you didn't overstuff your sausage. When you squeeze your link, it should leave an indentation. That's letting you know that it's just the right amount. If you squeeze your link and it feels like it's going to explode, then you've overstuffed it. So we're going to basically alternate the way that we link three times forward and then three times back. And this method of linking your sausage produces a nice tight link. You're going to get plump sausages. This last little sausage right here, we're going to go ahead and tie off and we are good to go. Now, if you happen to notice any air pockets, and I see a couple here, we're going to use a sausage pricker. And we're going to prick out those air pockets because we want that sausage casing to adhere to the meat and air pockets tend to keep that from happening. This needs to go into the fridge overnight so the cure can work. Those flavors can come together. And the next day, we're going to go ahead and smoke it. When it comes to smoking sausages, I like to follow a specific schedule. If you have a particular way of smoking sausages and you like the way they come out, continue doing that. For me, I like to dry my sausages out for about an hour. And then I like to increase the temperature over the next several hours. And uh, I can do that because I'm using a digital smoker from smoking it and a cold smoker from smoking it. And both of these in combination allow me to maximize the amount of smoke and really dial in the way that we cook these sausages. So let me just kind of show you the schedule. This is the app that comes with the smoker. And we're going to start at 100 Fahrenheit for an hour and a half with the door open. That's going to dry the sausages. It's going to automatically bump up to 125 for another hour and a half. That's when we apply smoke. And then it's going to bump up to 155 for one hour. See, we're just gradually increasing the temperature. Once that step is finished, the smoker is going to automatically bump up to 175 for another hour. And then it's going to finish off at 200 degrees until we reach an internal of 145. This schedule is typically what I use when I smoke sausages. It's going to retain a lot of that juiciness. It's going to give us a nice snappy bite. And we're going to have loads of that beautiful smoky flavor. Our sausages are finished. We have an internal temperature of 145 and for these low and slow sausages that's absolutely perfect i mean look at them beautiful color extra sharp cheddar sprinkled throughout let's go ahead and get these into a water bath so that they can cool down and this doesn't have to be an ice cold water bath just a regular cold water bath is sufficient if the water's ice cold and you leave it in there for too long it could turn that casing into a chewy disaster and that's not what you want so i just used regular cold water now leave it in there for 15 or 20 minutes and then place it on a cooling rack like this so that it can begin the process of blooming blooming is all about color development so we're going to leave this on our kitchen counter at room temperature for three to four hours and these sausages are officially done why don't we heat one up and see what they taste like The Texas Bowl of Chili Sausage, a recipe brought to us by one of the channel's longtime patrons. Thank you, Larry. And I got to tell you, <laughs> this smells incredible. Oh, wow. Let's just give it a bite. Mm. <laughs> wow. Talk about a flavor explosion. I mean, check this out. Look at that. Cheese literally oozing out in every bite. I'm kind of beside myself right now. So far, this has got to be the best tasting sausage uh, this year, quite possibly in all the seasons. I mean, this thing is packing some flavor and it actually does taste like a Texas bowl of chili. Excuse me for a second. Hmm. 
Wow. I'm impressed. That's one of the things that I love about this show. I get to get exposed to recipes that otherwise I never would have. And I get to share them with you guys because let me tell you, this one is on point. You got to give it a shot. It's smoky. It's spicy. It's cheesy. It's juicy. It's snappy. Golly, I don't know what else you would want in a sausage. I mean, this quite possibly may be a perfect sausage. I hope you get a chance to try it. If you do, or if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you're new to this channel and you like sausages, you've caught us at the right time because we are in the middle of a sausage fest, a month full of daily uploads, brand new sausage making recipes every day this month. I don't want you to miss a single episode. So take a moment, click that subscribe button and that notification bell. And you know what? I can't stop thinking about this sausage. I mean, this thing, look at this just one more time. Wow. Just absolutely crazy. I'm going to have a recipe link in the description box below. I hope you get a chance to make it. Thanks for joining us here at Celebrate Sausage. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>